What's up, Money Minds, and welcome back to Market Briefs Video Edition. Today is November 1st, and here's some business and financial news you can finally use. Meta Materials, a company that is completely unrelated to Facebook, benefited from Facebook's rebranding. Meta Materials is a Canadian materials company, and it surged after the Facebook news. This actually reminds us when Zoom technologies began to surge in the stock market, when investors mistook it for Zoom video communications back in 2020 during the surge. Do your own research, people! In our market preview for November 1st, the markets ended last week in mixed territory, but overall they saw gains for the final week of October. There were some massive earnings reports last week, and big tech actually disappointed due to supply chain issues. Coming up this week, though, we have Berkshire Hathaway reporting. Alibaba, Pfizer, Qualcomm, CVS, Airbnb, BP, Amgen, and many, many others. Speaking of Pfizer, the FDA authorized the use of Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 last Friday. In our financial tip of the day, good investors come up with a solid investment plan for all types of situations. Emotional investors will see red in their portfolio and panic because they think they are losing money. If you find yourself feeling sick to your stomach on negative market days, then it might be worth reevaluating your positions to come up with a different plan that actually works for you. The bottom line is never invest on emotion and make sure to come up with a plan beforehand. If you wanna learn more about how to invest your money strategically, our team wrote an article on this topic over on theminoritymindset.com and I will link it for you in the description below. Our first main story of the day today is all about energy and higher prices. But before we break all of that down, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News, and if you like this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button below and hit that little notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world. We can keep making videos just like this one. Last week, two of the world's biggest oil companies reported earnings, a telling tale for the industry as a whole. Last Friday, America's largest oil company, ExxonMobil, said that its Q3 profit was the highest it's seen in years. The company earned a reported $1.58 per share as higher prices boosted results. However, despite a strong earnings beat, Exxon slightly missed estimates on revenue. Exxon's revenue jumped 60% to $73.8 billion in quarter three, but Wall Street was expecting revenue that was around $76.34 billion. The company said that the energy industry is still recovering after the demand implosion that happened in 2020. In 2022, Exxon plans a share repurchase program of up to $10 billion for 12 to 24 months. In addition, Chevron, one of Exxon's competitors, reported its highest free cash flow in company history. Chevron beat on the top and bottom lines for the quarter with revenue jumping over 80% year over year. Chevron also paid over $2.6 billion in dividends during the quarter. The turnaround for energy companies around the world is starting to gain strength. As prices around the world jump, around $80 per barrel at the moment, energy companies get a pretty obvious boost. Demand is still likely a key focus, and as more people return to travel and work, that is probably going to go up. Next up in our second story, we're talking all about inflation. More specifically though, the Federal Reserve's favorite inflation gauge pumped up even more last week. Core inflation, which is the Fed's preferred gauge, increased by around 3.6% for 12 months, the fastest increase in over 30 years. Headline inflation, including food and energy, jumped by about 4.4% in September. This is also an annual rate. That's also the fastest since 1991. Personal income also declined at a quicker pace than expected. Consumer spending increased and employment costs jumped even more than expected. Hmm, a continued rise in inflation and a decrease in personal income? Yeah, that's not great. The inflation report came just one day after the GDP or gross domestic product report, which increased at only 2%, again, an annualized rate, in Q3, the slowest since April of 2020. That is it for our main two stories of the day today. So let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Policy Genius. Policy Genius will do all the work for you so you can stop stressing about life insurance. All you need to do is enter just a few pieces of information and Policy Genius will search through thousands of plans and present the best ones to you so you can make sure you're getting the best deal. What's even better is they do not charge you any additional fees to use them. You just need to learn, 
compare, and then apply. When you are in the learning stage, Policy Genius will teach you everything you could have ever wanted to know about life insurance. Next up, you'll need to compare. Compare insurance quotes to find the best option and, of course, save money. And number three, just apply. Their service is free of hassle and free of charge. With Policy Genius, finding a quote is easy and does not cost you a penny. So if you want to see what they can do for you and want to learn more about life insurance in general, I will leave a link in the description below on exactly how you can get started with Policy Genius. Big shout out to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video, but now back to the news. Alibaba is working to kick Amazon out of Europe and take over the entire continent as the biggest e-commerce company on the continent. Although Amazon is definitely a top seller in Western Europe, in countries like France and Spain, Alibaba has secured the eastern side. Alibaba is one of the top three sellers in all of Eastern Europe, and it continues to grow. During the pandemic, Amazon did not grow at all in Europe, remaining at a measly 19.3%. Alibaba's market share, on the other hand, increased to 2.9%, a 2% gain from 2019. The company even held a top place spot for Eastern Europe until Polish e-commerce company Allegro moved up. Things are different now though, Alibaba has a plan. Singles Day, similar to US's Black Friday or Prime Day, starts on November 11th and plans to expand even more throughout Europe. Alibaba plans on using its new delivery service called AliExpress. Next up, earnings reports have been coming out every single day over the last couple of weeks, but overall, how are the companies doing? Let's check out the companies in today's earnings report card. Demand is looking pretty strong and has remained strong throughout Q3 with sales and earnings heightened across all sectors, industrial, electronics, transportation, health, and office supplies. Orders remained high, backlogs were stocked, and inventory was low. Profits were lower than the second quarter, which broke records with a profit margin of around 13.5%. Q3 was a little lower at 12.5%. Nothing to celebrate, but also nothing to worry about, at least not yet. How did companies do on the estimates front though? Companies are not beating estimates in Q3 like they were during the rest of the year, and the ones that were surpassing expectations are barely doing it now. So far, the companies that have actually beat estimates have only done so by 10% much lower than in Q1 and Q2, who were stomping out the Dow estimate of around 20%. Now, of course, the ongoing supply issues have taken a massive hit on oil companies. Ports are congested, workers are sparse, and prices are high. Now it's just a matter of when these problems will get fixed and if they will either hurt or boost companies' performance in Q4. Money Minds, we are nearing the end of today's Market Briefs newsletter, but here's just a few more things to keep in mind. Last week, a Squid Game-themed cryptocurrency jumped 2,400% in a 24-hour span, sitting at around $2.22 per coin. Another thing to keep in mind is that Cricket Wireless is removing speed caps on its plans and offers offering 5G to all of its customers. In addition, Amazon announced a 20% stake in the electric vehicle maker Rivian. Rivian filed its IPO last month. And finally, Zendesk sank around 15% after it announced plans to acquire Momentum for $4 billion in stock. That is it for today's business and financial news. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling, Money Minds, and I'll see you all in the next one.